Hello, my name is Kathy Garza, and I'm the director of the Berkeley Board Fellows Program for the Center for Nonprofit and Public Leadership. I also run the Alumni Engagement Program for the Center, and today I'm going to talk about the Berkeley Board Fellows Program as an experiential learning and leadership development program for Haas and other graduate students at, on the UC Berkeley campus. The Berkeley Board Fellows Program is supported by the staff at the Center for Nonprofit and Public Leadership. You'll hear a lot from me uh, as the director of the Fellows Program, as well as Danner Dowd Martin, our program coordinator. We will be in communication with Fellows quite a bit throughout the year. We're also supported by Andrew Cardenas, our associate director, Ben Mangan, our executive director, and Nora Silver our faculty director. At any point throughout the year, you'll probably be in contact with these staff members. So what is the Berkeley Board Fellows Program? I think the best resource for you on that is to hear from former fellows themselves. I felt like we were part of the Bayou family, definitely, um, in that it was it was a very informal setting. It seems like we were having a conversation um, during the whole time we were at the board meetings. Um, so I really like that. Um, when people normally hear board of directors, you think of a lot, uh, you think of like pretty intense situation. Um, but for, for me, it's like being on a nonprofit board, um, I actually felt that it was a very welcoming environment that I liked very much. I, the main reason I, I chose to do an MBA versus any other program um, was not only to become a better leader, but also to be able to apply the concepts I was applying it. I was learning in class right to the real world um, immediately. And so Board Fellows was really the main way for me to start applying a lot of what I was learning um, to an organization that has a lot of challenges and um, and could use some of the expertise that we're developing in business school. Um, for me personally and specifically, um, I knew I wanted to go into education and so it was beneficial to understand um, how the nonprofit board works, uh, what are some of the typical challenges that they face, um, and really using that information um, to drive what I wanted to get out of the MBA as well. So for me it was a, it was a, a feedback loop that was useful uh, that served me throughout uh, the two years at, at Haas. So as you've heard, the Fellows Program helps students grow their leadership capabilities. There is leadership and influence without authority throughout the program. It fosters more social impact. Uh, and we do match students directly to nonprofit boards. It is the academic year long, uh, so from October to May, and we ask our nonprofit partners to onboard our fellows just as they would a normal board member. So you are treated just like a normal nonprofit board member. Why would you want to become a fellow? Um, there is this practicing of your leadership skills that takes place this influencing without authority is put into play. Uh, these soft skills are developed. What you learn in the classroom is mostly the hard skills, the financial analysis, marketing, and board service really implements and has you practice uh, the softer leadership skills. Board fellows additionally allows you to actively engage with and contribute to your local community. Uh, furthering the social missions of these nonprofits. And you get to get this insight into an organization that governs for social change. Their board of directors is very different than the board of directors of for-profit institutions, and that difference is a good one to see and compare. You uh, further will expand your network. Uh, there you will be on boards with other professionals in, uh, in the community, uh, people who might be potential job leads for you, uh, and no industry information that would be helpful for you outside of board service. And last, your 
a board fellows program counts towards your Beyond Yourself fellow program? I think that um, I would advise a future board fellow to definitely participate because it's great to get involved with the community and be involved with the local organization. I enjoyed you know, meeting the other board members and then also going to the um, office and seeing their, their workshop hours where their clients actually came in and met with lawyers and seeing the people being helped and that was maybe feel like part of the community. You know, I just moved to the Bay Area. I didn't know that many people. So it was nice to feel part of the community. Um, so it's great on that respect and it's just, uh, it's not such a big time commitment that you can't fit it in with your other things, but it's a good, it's something that can make you feel good to be a part of. What are the requirements of the Berkeley Board Fellows Program? There is this board service. You must attend all board meetings. There are committee meetings you will also need to attend based upon the project that uh, you will have to complete. The project is identified by the nonprofit. It's strategically significant to the nonprofit, so they're counting on the fellows to complete this project and help them through this uh, whatever challenge they're facing. You are paired with a fellow student, so you're not in this alone. You're helping um, the nonprofit on this project uh, as, as a pair. And projects come in all functional areas. You could get one in finance, marketing, strategy, business development. Uh, it can fall in any of these categories. You, uh, there is an option in the application for you to uh, list your preference. And there is participation management that uh, is required in that the center hosts events that you uh, must participate in. We require that you turn in project scopes. We have training available that uh, we want you to attend to make you uh, more effective on the board. We have project check-ins and there is the finale that we host in April that uh, is uh, a culmination of your experience with the fellows program. To give you an idea, uh, of, because what we hear from students is, can you give me a sense of what, uh, where the nonprofits, who they serve, uh, wh what type of projects I might work on? Here's a, a slide on what we saw last year, uh, the 13-14 the academic year, with children and youth being uh, the biggest uh, service area for our nonprofits, uh, education following, but you'll see that all industry areas were represented, so there's something there for everyone. And as to projects, uh, the strategic planning area seemed to be the heaviest last year, but again there too there's a smattering of all uh, with marketing and communications coming in second. Uh, but all areas represented. To dig deeper, because uh, I know projects are a, uh, a, a question that, rise, that comes up for students quite a bit, looking at the functional areas, some past projects are uh, in the marketing area are market research, some brand audits, in the finance area analysis of underperforming programs, strategy, strategic planning for particular areas like the networking technology, feasibility study of a new service, and some random program evaluation, looking at fundraising tools. And the quote in the middle is uh, an example of just how important and relevant it is for the board for, uh, to have fellows on their, uh, to, be, to take part in their organizations. The, the fellows do indeed provide much needed research and analysis of our situation to jumpstart. Uh, this was a quote from a leadership high client. So how do we choose fellows? Uh, we ask that students submit a thoughtful and complete application. Uh, we want to see a demonstrated interest in social impact and nonprofit board service. We really want to see that interest there and a rock solid commitment to the requirements. We kind of are on the honor system here. We say that we're gonna, the project and your commitment to fellows takes about eight hours a month. We don't check in with you every month to, to validate that. So it's a little bit of the honor system, but there are requirements that are 
uh, followed up on, namely at your attendance at board meetings and committee meetings, regular check-ins with your board mentor, uh, meeting with coaches that we provide two times a year, once in October to help you refine your scope, your project scope, and once in, in February to, uh, for a project check-in. We ask that you attend uh, some relevant events that we host for you, the kickoff of where you meet your, your nonprofit in October, early October, some training in December, and then again the finale in late April. And then there is the deliverable. You must present to your cl nonprofit client uh, and, and, to, and submit to us your final project. And of course, being at Haas, you will be surveyed um, mid-year and end of year. And we, look f we take your results seriously. We support you well throughout this program where you will, you will have resources available to you to contact should you have questions, hit bumps. Uh, starting with the center staff, we're here for you uh, every day. Our faculty is available as well with special knowledge, specialized knowledge in certain areas. Our website is available to you 24-7 with a resources page on project uh, information, industry information that that's, uh, can provide some help and guidance. We provide coaches for you as well. These are experienced board members uh, who volunteer their time. Many of them are Haas alums themselves and are available to you uh, on call or uh, through office hours uh, for project completion. And the nonprofit supports you as well with a board mentor. They identify a fellow board member to help acclimate you to their culture and to uh, help along the way with your project. So let's hear from a coach uh, on the kind of resource that they can provide and their perspective on the relationship. I view my role as pretty much on demand. Uh, I met, you know, all of the fellows at the beginning of the year and had a sense of the projects and um, sort of introduced myself to them early on and just said, you know, let me know how your first board meeting goes or please send me your uh, scope of work. And after that, it was really, so let me know if, if you need my help then. Right. And, uh, after the mid-year evaluations, um, I checked in both with the, uh, the fellows and with the project mentors just to ask, is, are things continuing to go okay? So um, there's some projects where I've had sort of minimal involvement and others where I've had, you know, strategy conversations or conversations about resources for the projects. Um, so just depends. It'd be open to, uh, the experience, uh, ob yeah, observe what's going on on the board and, and just uh, sort of be a sponge. In addition to sort of, you know, putting forth your best effort on the project, really just, you know, observing how the board interacts and, and uh, how it takes decisions and uh, just be very um, curious about it. To give you a sense of how you fit this fellowship in with your academic year. We kick off October 6th. It's an evening event. Uh, all fellows must attend because it is the opportunity for you to meet your nonprofit client. And introductions are made. Uh, business program uh, protocols are set. And uh, it's, it's the first opportunity to hear ab about your project and get to know your client. From October 6th through November 3rd, you're refining your scope on that project. Some of them, no refinement is needed, but some, uh, based upon your skills and your interests, there may be some adjustment that's, that are made. And again, this is where the coaches come in handy and the, all your support that we mentioned before. November 3rd, your scopes are due to the center and to your board mentor. And in early December, we hold a training session for you uh, we wait until December, figuring that by that time you will have gone through at least one board meeting 
and have had an opportunity to sit through a session uh, and, and this training is timely for that purpose to answer your questions and um, hone in on specific issues you might have. From February to March, we're doing project check-ins. Again, your coaches come into play here as do the center staff and faculty. And in April, we hold the finale. And in May, and sometimes in April, you'll be presenting your final project to the board, to your own nonprofit board. All this time, you're attending board meetings. Some nonprofits meet monthly, usually in the evening. You can almost always count on them being in the evening. Some meet quarterly, some meet every other month. but uh, that goes on throughout the, your term here. Uh, I knew coming into Haas that I wanted to participate in board fellows. I'm, I came here because I wanted to transition into a role in education leadership. My first year in Berkeley board fellows was my first introduction to nonprofits. Um, and so I think I really just wanted to soak it all in. Um, and understand how nonprofit boards worked. Yes, I think it's absolutely great for non-MBA students, um, especially for public policy students. A lot of us uh, who are studying public policy hope to hold leadership positions in nonprofit organizations or in whatever career we hope to that, that we aspire to. I think we. Um, would love to take up leadership positions in the nonprofit sector. So as a board member, I could really see a lot of my classmates bringing a lot of uh, information and insight to the table as a board member for a nonprofit organization. So I think it's a great experience for public policy students in particular. Time management is very important. I think that's the skill that you learn in grad school. Um, and this is very similar to, you know, probably what the board, the members of the board of directors at our nonprofit have to do. They have their, they, they have the regular job and they take on um, this nonprofit role um, voluntarily. Um, so if they can do it, I think we as grad students, we actually have it probably pretty easy compared to someone who has a full um, work schedule. There's attorneys on the board, so there are accountants on the board. Um, so I know I have it hard, but I can't imagine how hard it is for them to, um, some of them even come from San Francisco to Berkeley um, for these board meetings. Our board was really accepting. Um, they loved having us there. We were definitely the youngest people in the room. Um, we were working on a social media project, so um, because the demographic was a little order, older, they knew they didn't have the expertise that we brought to the table. Um, and they really did treat us like non-voting members. Um, they even let us vote on a couple of decisions. They did tell us our vote did not count, um, but it was fun being a part of that process and being put on the spot to make that hard decision um, that you know normally you know you would leave to higher management to make for you a lot of times. Please apply today. The application is available on our website. You see the Bitly address. The deadline is September 13th. Uh, and if you have any questions, just shoot them to socialimpact@haas.berkeley.edu.